everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Bish's RV of Coldwater, Michigan with a Wildwood or Salem, whichever you prefer to call it, 170 SS. Those are the exact same two campers, by the way, just under a different name. And it's almost like somebody looked at them, said, bet you can't shove a full super slide in a small camper, and they said, yeah, hold my beer, watch this. And this is what they came up with. And it's not gonna be for everybody, but what RV is. Overall though, I think this thing is pretty darn cool because what it's giving us is maximum living space in minimum towing and storage uh, size. Now, where this one comes in, it's very similar to a Cherokee 18 TO Wolf Pup that we also have here on this channel. I'll leave you a link for that. But this is seven and a half foot wide, plus that super slide makes this the biggest little camper I think you're ever gonna find out there. It's, it's a very fun, cool design. Um, it also, it's an interesting thing. It could be a solo runaround camper. It could be a, uh, a, a couple's weekend runaround trailer, but it could also be an interesting small uh, family camper. Um, and it might work for somebody who maybe just has a guest on the weekend. Like maybe you're a single parent and you wanna take your kid out every now and then, or you're a grandparent. And most of the time it's just one or two of you, but sometimes you might have one of the littles. This one little trailer can actually serve multiple different purposes in there, especially when you factor in this crafty little hidden bonus bunk that it has in it. Now I'll always be fair with you. Like I'll volunteer a couple things here real quick. It is a camp queen and uh, it does have a fairly limited cargo capacity. So kind of keep that in mind but if you can work within those things or you're just kind of curious stay uh stay tuned here because this one's kind of fun and if you're new with our channel make sure you hit subscribe to always catch the next one that's rolling out and i don't know that there are a lot of single axle little campers out there that can give you legitimately this kind of expansive view without flipping into wide angle mode like you saw in our little you know flyby where I, I i've got about one minute to give you a look at this thing and it's just kind of one of those things i'm just trying something new give me some feedback on that by the way let me know what you think about that but the big windows here certainly don't hurt either something else that gives it a big look is the completely carpetless nature of this floor plan including over here in that slide now that is a little bit of a step up slide because it's actually just above the wheel well this rv is still small enough the, uh, the, the wheel well basically does bump up into the body of the RV. So that's one of the things that they kind of have to do here. And I tell you what, man, they gave us some big, expansive window coverage on this one, uh, including over here on the, uh, the headboard side of the bed. Now, as we twist around, I always like to try to cover this. Oops, I'm running into the uh, bathroom wall behind me. This is a Camp Queen bed. But you notice how there's some extra space at the foot of it. That's because this is a seven and a half foot wide camper, 90 inch body. What that means is that you've got an extra six inches of extra, uh, extra six inches of extra space. Yep, that's what I was going to say. I'm an idiot. Uh, basically, you've got more room through the entire camper and they can use that to give you more space, more storage. Like, you notice you have that overhead cabinet. That's that's all well and good. But you've also got at least a small hanging wardrobe tower over there that a lot of small trailers typically lack. Now, uh, it's, I talk about these all the time, but rarely do I get a chance to actually showcase them. Um, if you have ever seen an RV, or if you have an RV that has that funky black rectangle thing in it, this is what it is actually for. That is a drive portable Bluetooth speaker that mounts into that. Now, that mount right there is both a charger for the speaker as well as a two-plug USB port. So you can use that for charging other things as well. But one of the things that I ask in my videos all the time is what if RVs got rid of the outside speakers and included a Bluetooth speaker? Wildwood and Salem are ahead of that curve. Now, I don't really feel like this is a floor plan based on spending a ton of time inside watching TV, but if you felt like doing it across from the sofa, your TV hookups would be over there on that wall. By the way, you like my nice little jewelry here? This is a rubber band that was holding the plastic on the toilet top right there, and I am a sweaty Betty. Good Lord. Okay, got to make sure I'm not making bare skin contact with any of the furniture here. Anyway, um, so I don't love the fact that it has no window in the entry door, being fair here. Now, it also means that there's one less leak point on the RV and there's one less place for sun to billow into the RV. But I do like to be able to see out the door side of my camper. But here's the thing, if what you're looking for is cross breezes, it's actually kind of fantastic, you know? If you're not gonna be running the air conditioner, if you just want some fresh airflow, this is something I don't think a lot of people look at and think about and realize the uh you know the screen door function over on the door side now there's no getting around the fact that it does not have a door side uh you know uh, or well rather a window in the door that's just one of those things what it does have however is uh an extra vent up here 
with a powered vent fan. Now that is the uh, the four inch dollar store fan up there. When uh, it's outside of the bathroom, that's what we call it. When it's in the bathroom, it's the fart fan. I just decided that. And a lot of that was based off some input by regular viewer, Mr. Steve Z, who has a very strong opinion about those small fans. And Steve, know that I appreciate you tuning in and continuing to voice your opinion because persistence wears out resistance. And if we wanna see the RV manufacturers change, we have to voice our opinion. So Steve's doing his part. Um, if you are looking for a vent fan upgrade, dollar for dollar, pound for pound, and I'm not sponsored by these guys, I just love their product, Hangs Vortex Fans. They are like maybe around 100, if not just over $100, as compared to a Max Air, which is four to 500. A Max Air requires that you completely remove the entire vent housing. A Hangs installs in the existing housing. So you never have to break your factory roof seals, which when you say it out loud, doesn't exactly sound like a great idea, you know? Um, the, uh, what, what do we, you know what? Let, let me shift back over here into the slide space. We're kind of talking about the breeze windows. It got me thinking about the windows. Now you've got some awesome viewing here. Admittedly, it's mostly over the, uh, the neighbor side of the RV, although you could always pull those shades and block that out. And again, you see how this has that crafty little bonus bunk down there, not to mention the big U-Dinette giving us uh, another big guest sleeping space. And that's what I was saying. This floor plan right here is one RV that could serve two or three different purposes. I could easily see this being a solo uh, owned camper. I could see this being just a couple's model. Someone's like, listen, I just want something small. We don't need anything big. We've got a smaller, say like a tow package mid-size pickup. Maybe this would be good for something like that, although I haven't checked the hitch weight. So somebody uh, verify me on that one. Um, but my point is, you know, it, it could also work for like, look, we're a small family and uh, we just wanna, we wanna kind of try camping before we go head first diving into it. That, this could be a, a, a very realistic option for you here. Now it does not have the world's biggest kitchen, but it does have a very large fridge for an RV of this size. That's one of those 10.7 cubic foot, 12 volt compressor fridges. You can also get these made with a six cubic foot gas electric two way. We're gonna talk about some solar options you have to keep either of those refrigerators up and running depending on how you camp. Now, what do you think of this kitchen arrangement? Because there's so many people, I see feedback all the time, people say, why do these manufacturers insist on putting a stovetop right against a refrigerator wall? So uh, FSX said, no sweat, I got you covered. And they also gave us a big farm sink with a split sink cover. I would like, and this is something I would personally probably add, is a flip up counter extension over here. But those are, that's screwdriver work, kind of like that vent fan upgrade or a toilet swap. If that's something you're looking for, those are easy, easy things that we can accomplish here for you at Bish's RV. Just let your outfitter know, we'll get you a quote. Heck, we could probably even lump it into your financing. Simple. Now, remember the bed mat that we saw for that little hideaway bonus bunk? Turns out it makes for one heck of a good doorstop for your bathroom when you're recording a video. So the next time you're recording a video of your camper, keep that in mind. A little helpful tip there for you from your Uncle Josh. But a real question, where do you store this thing when you're not using it? And there's not necessarily a good spot for it. I think you could potentially shove it under the main mattress or just lay it on top of the main mattress. Or if you're not going to be using it on a given camping trip, leave it at home. You know, nothing says you have to always bring it with you. Now the bathroom over here, it is tight on the right. There is no other way of saying it. The left side is great though. So if you're a bit of a leaner, if you tend to lean heavily off to the side when you are uh, employing the use of the butt napkins, you will have yourself a, uh, a, a decent functional space here. And I can only estimate that's why they did it. Someone might say, why didn't they you know, center that toilet up a little bit more in the space? There might be a floor stud in the way. I don't know, I don't have a schematic of this thing. Now up here in the ceiling, it's a six and a half foot uh, tall camper. So if you're over six foot like me, in the ceiling panel section, your head's gonna be bumping the ceiling, but it has a combo skylight vent fan over there that you could utilize for a little bit of extra headroom. And as you notice, that was an easy step in shower, not a step over tub, also not a shub. And it is technically a dry bath, not a, uh, a bedroom bathroom toilet, as it were. Bedroom bathroom, shower toilet, toilet. Bedroom bathroom toilet, what? All right, so I don't know what I was getting into with the bedroom bathroom th thing. Just, it's hot and I probably need to hydrate. My brain ain't doing the words. But 
I had a thought here on this mattress. Um, where can you put that thing when you're not using it? Well, I decided to uh, call in the big guns. I'm going to ask my wife. Hey, honey. Yeah, no, I'm fine. No, just recording a quick video here. Um, look, I'm in a camper that has an extra mattress. Do you know where I could stick it? I, I could put it up my... Um, I don't know if I could say that on camera. So what about the road mode travel access? Oop, you see my knee popping into frame as I lay back on the bed over here to get you the shot. You should see the way that I act like I'm, you know, I'm a chubby dude, but I can contort myself up on top of a kitchen counter and shove myself into a corner with the best of them here. I should be an America's Got Talent doing this. My point here is, though, um, with the slide close, when you have a big moving object in a small box like this, something's got to give. Now, your front bed... Your, uh, you know, your kitchen are fully accessible. The bathroom, though, if you gotta go, this is a no-go. You better find some other place to go when you gotta go. Now, I tried to do something. I tried to leave that bathroom door open, but there's just not enough room. This is a straight not gonna happen. The only way I think you could uh, enjoy traveling bathroom access on this one without opening the slide is if you did something uh, like you took the door off and put a curtain up, although... I don't know. I mean, is is that an acceptable solution? I guess maybe I don't want to assume. I would estimate a lot of people would not be interested in that. But I, I don't know. I suppose I could throw that idea out there. Now, speaking of ideas, what do you think of this one? Wildwood is very good at doing this thing they call a jiffy bed, which is like a low dollar budget version of a Murphy bed shoved up into a corner. And it works really well for a small space on a budget, you know? Certainly you could you could find something that's fancier dancier, but you're gonna be spending for it. You know, if you're trying to like, look, I don't camp a whole lot, I need something basic, but I want function, that's where this could come in. But what I'm getting at is, what if they employed that jiffy bed function like they have in the 178 Wildwood in this camper. And if you don't know what that is, I will leave you a link in the video description. And if I forget, uh, remind me and I will drop you a link in the comment section where you could check that out. Would you like to see that bed system put into this? I think it could expand our daytime living space even further, although it's going to eat into the outside storage that you're going to see in this RV in just a minute. Now, I mentioned before, this is the same as a Salem. On the inside of the RV, they are 100% exactly identical. The Salem 170 SS has a silver skin. The Wildwood has a white exterior skin. Then they have a couple slightly different accent colors. But they are literally made in the same places by the same people. They're the exact same trailer. That's why they have the exact same model numbers. So they have the same good points and maybe the same downfalls too. One of the other things here that might be a good indicator for you that uh, this is riding on a little bit heavier axles that double step instead of a single that's one of the a, a good way to tell that the rv is actually lifted up a little bit higher as compared to maybe some single axles out there now we've got a simple side mount solar prep plug over here we're going to talk a little bit more about solar before the video is done assuming i don't forget sometimes to do stupid stuff like that now uh this is something i i failed to talk about way too often uh where the rv is down with the thickness now your normal extruded aluminum skin, wavy, crinkly, uh, potato chip looking aluminum skin on the sidewalls is normally a 0.024 inch thickness. The darker uh, bands on the RV that have the, the darker color areas, those are actually a, a, a 0.33. They're significantly thicker, so they resist heat expansion and contraction, basically so you don't stress the seams and it, it helps the RV avoid having leaks because that is a four letter word, uh, plus an S, leaks is five letters. You get the idea. Anyway, leak is a four letter word in the RV industry and, and quite literally, you get the point. It'll help resist that. Now, um, I'm trying not to sneeze, so if I sound somewhat distracted or if I sound extra nasally, it's because I'm half pinching my nose over here. Speaking of down with the thickness, the nose skin is 67% thicker than the standard white exterior sidewall skin so that it can resist uh, you know, being buckled in by headwinds and, and, and bouncing stones that might get thrown off your tires or oncoming tires away. Uh, behind that propane tank over there, you may see that there is a battery disconnect switch, a fantastic way to keep that 12 volt fridge, and not to mention all the other things like all the circuit panels in this uh, from slowly trickle drawing off the battery, although the 12 volt fridge would probably eat a battery pretty quickly if you're not paying attention. Uh, magnet hold back on the baggage door, although it does still have the silver twisty locks. Again, I'll do my best to shoot you straight. 
big underbed storage cavity here. It's not a full pass through just because uh, the way this one's designed. Oh crap, on a spatula, son of a gun. That, ooh, wow, I'm using some strong language today, ladies and gentlemen. Golly, geez, gee whiz bang willikers, cheese crackers, whatever. Uh, those are the, uh, <laughs> the axle hub little simulator end caps in there that I failed to put on this to, before I displayed it today. So apologies, that's my fault, not theirs. Um, you don't have slide side breeze windows, which would be nice, but at least these giant panoramic windows, they do open for airflow. And assuming you're looking for fresh airflow, if you have your main entry door open in screen door mode, uh, and then you have that kitchen window open, both of those big windows do have an opposing pair window, a mate effectively, which can give you some really fantastic cross breeze through here. This is also kind of a rare find. A smaller, more basic single axle stick and tin camper with a slide that is still slide awning prepped, which is kind of cool. It is unfortunately not ladder prepped. It is actually though a walkable roof, so that's a little thing to keep in mind. Um, spare tires are optional on these, so uh, you know keep that in memory banks. But as you see with Bishes, we are very big fans of making sure that you have those kind of like oops emergency rainy day kind of features covered here one other little detail i want to leave you with actually no two three geez sorry black tank flush and full outside utility shower single axle stick and tin campers very often lack some detail features like that and a fully enclosed uh sectionalized serviceable panel belly i, I could be wrong i'm not aware of anybody else out there doing are, are you guys i see a lot of rvs i won't claim to know them all i'm not i'm not the guaranteed authority on everything i don't know of anyone else taking this kind of time and attention to protect the belly on a single axle stick and tin camper though now, if you prefer fiberglass, they offer an, a, a fiberglass exterior skin upgrade on this just called Platinum. And that is available again, whether you call it Salem or Wildwood, you can get it in the Platinum Edition. And uh, that's where they, they'll add an X to the end of the model number sometimes. That's the only thing that does is adds fiberglass to it. There's also a factory solar package that you can get on this with a 30 amp controller and a 190 watt roof solar package. So keep in mind. Um, right now, sitting here, it's definitely a small little park-friendly kind of camper, something you can tote around and park easily. But if you want to do a couple things to make it a little more off-grid functional, you can do that. You can kind of customize this one, Burger King it. You could have it your way. <laughs> so if you like what you see, hit the like button here and subscribe if you're new with our channel, and we'd love to see you the next time around. Leave me some comments and let me know what you think about this good, bad, ugly, or in-between. I like hearing all of it. So take care, stay safe, have fun. Happy camping, everyone.